Welcome to Intake. I'm your host, Bertha Barrett. And as always, I'm here with my co-hosts, Jules Jean-Pierre and Shauna Sopko. <laughs> so ladies, you know our topic today is more than just the blues. So when I think about that topic, um, the first thing I think about is like B.B. King and Billie Holiday, you know, that kind of blues, like, them that's got shall get. No, not those kind not of blues. Guess. Not that one. No, not that okay. one. Okay, so. <laughs> all those are correlation. About, yeah, all of those are correlation, <laughs> yeah. So ladies, when we talk about depression, um, I think first of all, we need to make the distinction between depression and sadness. In our society, we overuse terminologies. Like, you know, we say, oh, she's just bipolar. Oh, he's just depressed. Mm -hmm. And really, they're just sad. And we have to know the difference between being depressed and sad, because they're totally two different things. Well, and and what it looks like, what depression actually right. is, and what it looks like, and how it manifests, completely differently depending on the person. Right. Absolutely. We also want to make sure that we help people understand that males experience depression differently than females. So what I would like to do mm -hmm. is take a minute to actually read the DSM-5 criteria mm -hmm. uh, for the major depressive disorder. Mm -hmm. There are many iterations of depression. There's a lot of different uh, types of depression. Uh, what I'm gonna hit on today, just for time's sake, right. is the one that most people are diagnosed with, just, mm -hmm. for, just for time's sake. If you think that you may have a type of depressive disorder of any kind, please talk to a professional, absolutely. Um, so just the basics, what is depression? Uh, otherwise known as major depressive disorder, which is what I'm going to share, or clinical depression is a common and serious mood disorder. Those who suffer from depression experience persistent feelings of sadness and hopelessness and lose interest in activities they once enjoyed. And I think that that, it, we can uh, uh, agree, is a big one, that right. just that complete loss of interest in anything. I want to get to, and I don't know if I'm not going to show you all my beautiful, my beautiful paper, okay. but um, the DSM-5 outlines the following criterion to make a diagnosis of depression. The individual must be experiencing five or more symptoms during the same two-week period, mm -hmm. and at least one of the symptoms should be either one depressed mood or two loss of interest or pleasure, right. which is that um, loss of anything. So. Um, the depressed mood most of the day, nearly every day, uh, markedly diminished interest or pleasure in all or almost all activities, which is what we've been talking about, um, significant weight loss when not dieting or weight gain, because a lot of people, it manifests differently, either I'm going to stuff my emotions, I'm gonna, right. I, so I'm going to eat too much, right. or I don't want anything to eat because right. um, I'm too upset. Um, slowing down of thought and reduction of physical movement, mm -hmm. just an overall lethargy, um, fatigue or loss of energy nearly every day, feelings of worthlessness or excessive or inappropriate guilt. Yeah. That's a big one. Um, diminished ability to think or concentrate or indecisiveness, and these are all nearly every day. Uh, recurring thoughts of death, recurrent suicidal ideation without a specific plan mm -hmm. or a suicide attempt or specific plan for committing suicide. And you pointed out some very key things with the DSM-5 because um, it's very hard to talk about depression and not also address suicide because a lot of people who experience major de depression, they also have suicidal ideations. Mm -hmm. And suicidal ideations for, for individuals who don't know, because that's mostly our lingo, mm -hmm. is basically thoughts, recurring thoughts of suicide um, with a plan, without a plan. So it's it's merely the idea of suicide. And then there's some other factors that we look into. And we really kind of ferret out in our profession uh, because a lot of times, what I don't know what I see in mm -hmm. clients, it's not even maybe a specific plan of I want to die. It's just I don't want to feel like this anymore. Right, exactly. And I see no way out of it. Right, Absolutely. exactly. And depression is a lot more than just sadness, which is why we're talking about this today, because you can see somebody who is sad due to some things that are going on in their life, and they might not necessarily be depressed. However, if you're starting to notice that an individual, even if that individual is yourself, mm -hmm. is starting to have marked impairment in your life, then that's when you should really start to be looking for help if you can do that yourself because 
we're talking about depression here. So you might not be able to reach out and ask for help. Or if you know somebody who is starting to exhibit some symptoms of depression, that you could ask for help for them. Earlier, I was looking at the National Institute of Mental Health, and they did a research in 2017, which said 11 million um, U.S. adults ages 18 and older had at least one major depressive um, disorder with severe impairment. And when we say impairment, we have to remember when we start talking about disorders, disorders usually change um, your behavior. If you look at depression, depression becomes so significant until it's hard for you to get out of bed, it's hard for you to go to work, right. it's hard for you to even think like, you know, what whatever normal would be, but what most people would just get up and just say, okay, if I had a solution or if I needed to find a solution for this or that, you know, I can go Google, I can go research, where when people are experiencing depression, that's hard for them to kind of, you know, put together. And I, I think that that is the key to all of these, any disorder that we talk about mm -hmm. when we're when we're talking right. about it, when if you're thinking about therapy, it's, is it impairing your daily functioning? Exactly. Are you, are you not able to take care of yourself exactly. anymore? Exactly. Are you not bathing? Right. Are you not going to work? Are you not right. eating properly? Are you not sleeping? That's impairment. That's what we talk, when we, what, when we say impairment, that's what that means. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And then when you have um, family members who think that it's very simple for somebody who is suffering with mm. depression to just merely, you see, you notice that you're sad. You know that there's something wrong with you. Why don't you go ahead and ask for help? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's just understanding that getting up out of bed, mm -hmm. that in itself is a task. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we don't shame individuals who are suffering from depression for not seeking the help because it's really hard. I agree, I totally agree. Um, um, we addressed earlier how depression looks different with gender. Yes. We definitely yes, want to yes, talk yes. about that. Yes, we do. Mm -hmm. um, and because of our societal expectations, mm -hmm. what we in our communities uh, accept from mm -hmm. an individual, right. it, it's, it's more, and I'm just throwing it out there, I, I don't know if we're mm -hmm. going to talk about this more in another show, but it's, it's more acceptable for a male mm -hmm. to fight, right. to be angry, right. to go drink too much, right. to go sleep around too right. much, you know, just right. that kind of stuff, that kind of behavior is more acceptable than a male to cry, mm -hmm. to say I'm scared, right. to say I'm upset, and right. to ask for help. And that's, that is why it's, it's underreported, mm -hmm. and it's why, and I know we're gonna talk about this in a different show, but it's why males have a higher rate of suicide. Exactly. Not uh, only is it underreported um, because of what's socially acceptable for them to do, but because of society and how they place it out on what's socially acceptable, they mm -hmm. might not even know that they're depressed themselves. Absolutely. Exactly. Because you pointed out some key things. Most of the time when males are depressed, they do express anger. A lot of their depressive modes mean looks similar to a man that we call, you know, flamboyant and out there messing around with women, but he's just trying to find happiness. He's just doing it in the wrong place. Absolutely. He's trying to find some significance. Uh -huh. And because we have just put this stigma of, oh, he's a man, he's the real dude, you know? We overlook what's really going on sometimes mm -hmm. with him. And um, like you said, with men, because I, even when I deal with young men, mm -hmm. this idea of expressing your emotions means looking like a punk. Right. And so they're struggling with all of these ideas of what a man should be. And at the same time, they're having a, they have they're having difficulties expressing, you know, that I'm struggling what this this manhood should look like for me. Yep. And they can't express that. So, of course, they become angry. And of course, a lot of things start to happen. And people around them just ignore it because they're like, oh, you know, there's nothing wrong with him. He's lazy. He just has anger issues or, you know, he has this and not realizing that, look, this could be depression. Who has not heard the boys will be boys. Yes. Right. You know, that those kind of phrases, it's just that it's attributing behaviors that are cries for help for exactly. I am hurting, I'm right. in pain. Right. Instead of looking at it that way, it's just, ah, oh, he'll, you know, he'll, he'll suck it up. Yeah. He's a girl pair. Yeah. You know, he'll get over it. He's yeah. just, you know, boys will be boys. Well, yeah. let's not forget, um, especially we're talking about the, the differences in regards to gender. Mm -hmm. So with women 
when they're suffering through depression. You know, it's more, it's a bit more acceptable for them to be suffering for, mm -hmm. from depression. Um, and then the different types, you know, mm -hmm. you have women who are pregnant right. and you have individuals who are suffering from prenatal depression, mm -hmm. postpartum depression, yes. um, premenopausal depression, mm -hmm. you know, and, yeah. and a lot of that is overlooked. And especially mm -hmm. with females, like even though it's acceptable for them to be sad, um, but when they're depressed during these times in their lives, it's overlooked. Like yeah. you should be over it by now. Yeah, and I think we need not forget um, young people. Yeah, Absolutely. because a lot of young females express their depression with self-harm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. And, um, and so they start cutting and doing different things to themselves because they have this depression. And that, it, it all, all of that acting out, it's a way of mm -hmm. acting out. Exactly. It all is a, is a symptom of suppressed and mm -hmm. stuffed emotional pain right. that is not being processed in a healthy way and it's going to come out yeah it's going to come out some way and i yeah. always i always joke but it's serious it might it'll blow out sideways on people who had nothing to do with right. it it's going to manifest in a way that is not healthy for anybody mm. and that's just one of those yeah and let's talk about um in another instance where individuals aren't aware we talk about being unaware that they're depressed. Some individuals, if they suffer a trauma, there's disassociation. Mm -hmm. So they're not even really connected to their feelings. However, the body keeps score. Mm -hmm. So they're still acting out and they're still manifesting symptoms of depression, but can't connect the two because they're not connected to their feelings. Oh, that's so key. I don't want to, I'm, I'm sitting here listening to you and, and sometimes we forget to do this, but depression among elder, yes. elderly people. That is very severe because they're dealing with getting older, um, this whole life expectancy, like, you know, because when loss you get old, of purpose yes, in life. loss of yeah. purpose in life, you know, all of that. And so among elderly people, depression is very significant. Yes. And very significant. And actually, I don't really recall the name of the study, but there is also a study out there in where they talk about how antidepressants are over uh, prescribed to um, elderly individuals. Right. And I'm really I'm sorry, sorry. We, yeah. you know, we, we want to <laughs> keep talking about this, but we are going to have to take a break. Yes, thank you. And we'll be right back. Welcome back to Intake. Today we're talking about depression and we are so delighted to have with us Mr. Chad Hendricks, who is an independent filmmaker in Jacksonville, Florida. Chad has been in the business for over 20 years. He's made several films, Me and Mrs. Jones, which as I understand it, he didn't know that it was about depression. Let's look at a quick clip of that and then we'll be back and talk with Chad. We gotta go see her. My soulmate. It's gonna hurt you again, dog. Went out on a limb, gone too far, broke down at the side of the road. What is my next step in this life? All I have is this knife. I'm so tired of your depression. Our depression? Because I didn't need you back then. And because? Because I was in love. Love's a four-letter word. Are we dating? No, I mean, we're friends. I'm freaking crazy. Hello? What are you doing all the way out here? I just need to see an old friend. Just, just like, like me. me. They, they long, long to see you. you. Shut the hell up. Who do you too, hater? Hit me with your best shot. Chad, welcome to Intake. Thank you. We're Appreciate delighted it. to have you here. Thank you. So before we get into me and Mrs. Jones, which I love, by the way, <laughs> why don't you tell us um, a little bit about your um, history um, uh, with depression? And um, let's just start from there. Yeah, it seemed like it was um, 
life's life's groovy life's gravy mm -hmm. through your teens and 20s mm -hmm. and then somewhere <laughs> in the middle you just figure out that you're lost you don't know where you want to go you don't know what you want to be when you grow up right. and you find yourself um smack dab in depression the, mm -hmm. the club ain't what it used to be mm -hmm. so it's just it's just a real heavy heaviness that um you know i I guess it, I guess I would cop out if I said it was it was uh, mainly you know a lot to do with being within the family and a mm -hmm. genetic thing, but it ties together. You mm -hmm. know when you have bipolar people and schizophrenia in your okay. DNA, but um, yeah, it's it's heavy. So what was one of the um, defining moments with your depression when you realized that hey I'm going through something? What was that yeah. like? Yeah, I um. In the the movie is is based on the story, but um, it had, it had been a good five years since the ex girlfriend had mm -hmm. had left, and uh, I was lost. I tried to you know s you know sleep my way out of that depression. Mm -hmm. Blondes, brunettes, redheads, you mm -hmm. name it, and and it just didn't didn't add up to the happiness of being with her. So um, I just remember feeling like I wanted to get closer to her in some way. And I went, I went running around the block okay. and I come running up into the yard after around, around the block and I pulled a hamstring and mm -hmm. I, I, and I literally said before I walked back in the house, I was like, really God, <laughs> this is how you want to do me like yeah. this. You know, I'm, you know, I'm sad, you know, I'm depressed. I miss her. I can't get it together. Don't know what I want to be when I grow up. And it's just, it just seems to, it, it dog piles, it mm -hmm. steamrolls. When once you're in the depression, you've got to you've got to ride it out. Right. Yeah. One of the things that I was thinking was um, as watching your when watching your movie, um, I was trying to come to an understanding of when it might have been a defining moment that um, you were depressed, and it seems like you had a, a bit of feeling, if you will, because of the relationship that you had with her, and then you lost it. So it, it almost seems like that sparked a search for something I felt, which snowballed into a lot of other things that I saw. You know, when you're in love, you feel alive, and um, you don't you don't play you don't play into all the things wrong with yourself because you're really mm -hmm. just into that person. So so it, I remember being in the in the being in the shower. And I remember just thinking, you know, it doesn't get any worse. I'm just going downhill, God. And, and I hear the the spirit say, move to the left or the right. Get out of your own way is right. what it was. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I immediately was like, what do you mean by that? And then I heard the voice come right back with move to the left or the right of yourself. Mm -hmm. And it really made sense to me. And even though now it might not really just make sense, but in that depression, it made all the sense. And I remember thinking, well, man, maybe I need a Bible. I've gotten as far as Genesis, you know, mm -hmm. the Phil Collins years, you know. So <laughs> so I thought, man, if I had a Bible, I might actually get, get right, you know. And I remember taking the garbage out, and sure enough, there's a box of books mm -hmm. on the outside of the dumpster, mm -hmm. not, not even in the dumpster. And there was a Bible, and there was a book called This Thing Called You by Ernest Holmes. And sure enough, those, uh, you know, those books ended up, when you sit on the can and you read out loud mm -hmm. and there ain't nobody around, all of a sudden the words kind of ricochet and come back mm -hmm. to you and, and to, to cry your way out of a depression and then to write my way out. You right. know, the, yeah. the script for the movie was my therapy. I literally couldn't, I couldn't, have, when you're unemployed and no wife, no kids mm -hmm. and, and you're living off of your folks it's easy to be depressed mm. and so you can't afford therapy and so when you start writing down your issues your father issues your your body pain and things all of a sudden it you can you can find your way out of it with pen to pad you know you you, you didn't have any therapy no you just did all this on your own just all these revelations and this this these realizations for yourself i had to do what they call crazy I had to do crazy and crazy was I had to tell my family I'm moving to Atlanta and to go live in a city I'd never been to for three months mm -hmm. and run out of money and come yeah. back home and 
you know, sometimes I just get stuck. Sometimes this city just doesn't feel like it's enough. And mm -hmm. so sometimes I have to go somewhere else to appreciate this city. So it's you you mentioned the voice in your head saying move to the left or the right just do something and we i know jules is familiar with this but we have a saying with certain uh in the therapeutic community that is move a muscle change your mind mm. and it's get up and do something get right. out of where whatever you are physically mm -hmm. and it helps change your mindset so that's really that's interesting that you just kind of came to that yourself. Well, uh, and I didn't. I didn't come about it myself. I, um, in my mid 20s, started the sadness started, and so I turned to um, self help books. Okay. I mm -hmm. started making love to Barnes and Noble and Borders, and I'd go in there, and if I wasn't writing a script, I was reading a book or buying a book. And so there was a book called This uh, How Much Joy Can You Stand? Mm -hmm. And I read it and um, the light came on and then I read The Alchemist and you know there's just books that just awaken the dreamers the dreamers thought process and it's funny when we um, my partner Tamika Lee and I did the movie when we showed the movie someone told me man this is a movie about depression yeah. it could help people and I didn't see it that way mm -hmm. even though I was full-blown in a depression when I wrote the thing so mm -hmm. Anyone who's chasing, it's, it's that old saying, if, uh, if, you, if you're living in the past, you're depressed. If you're living in the future, you're anxious. If you live in the moment, you're happy. You know, you, you know the present is now. And so that movie is, is, a guy, is a handbook to living in the past. Right, okay. So. You said something earlier, and I think it's key. And I, I think it's key for us to address as therapists. You said you would, um, you could just flunk out and blame it on genetics. Um, as I understand, mom has suffers with bipolar, and and so when we look at genetics, because a lot of people don't understand that it can be a gen genetics that causes depression and not just an event in your life. And so we have to talk about the genetics because people don't understand that. And so when it's a genetic factor involved. People just feel like something is wrong with me, you know, because nothing really occurred in my life to make me feel this way. But it came about from the, you know, genetics. Um, it, it can be parent, it can be grandma, whomever. Go ahead, Jones. So let's talk about when you, because we'll probably talk about this in another segment, but we talk about trauma and mm -hmm. how trauma changes DNA, epigenetics, okay? So if you have that, that happens in your family, mm -hmm it comes down the pipeline. And so right. you might be somebody who's affected with depression mm -hmm. as a result of something that happened in your um, lineage. Yeah. But I am. Um, so that's where we come down to that nature versus nurture. Mm -hmm. And so a component, it, I know we've, we've been doing a lot of research and it's what we do. And there's evidence that uh, says that they're equally, they're equally, um, uh, they equally contribute for somebody who struggles with depression. So there is that that predisposition, absolutely. Yeah. But a lot of it is how you were taught. We learn how to be, mm -hmm. we learn how to treat ourselves. Right. We learn how to be in relationships with others. We learn how to be from our families. And so if they're struggling with some sort of a mental health disorder, you, we as, as little people learn how to function and to right. get our needs met in that environment. So a lot of times it's we learn how to negative filter. Right. We learn how to talk, have that negative self-talk right. and to think that we're worthless or, so there's, it's both. And the perfect storm is what ends up happening. We have major depressive yeah. disorder. Yeah. And Chad, when you and I talked earlier, because I know you have a great mom, I met her. Mm -hmm. She's an artist too. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> so it seems like both of you all use creativity. I would like to agree with you too that it's not genetics <laughs> because you're, you seem to be doing very fine, you're doing very well now. Um, but the fact that you did struggle with it at some point is the issue. And I think that's why we need to talk about it because we need to make people aware of what depression looks like. So just um, if you could explain in your words what depression felt like for you, how could you do that? <laughs> well, if I'm going by family, we always put a smile on to, to hide all the sadness. Mm -hmm. um, sadness to me was stay up late, get, uh, get up late, 
shower, eat, come back, stay in my room, mm -hmm. fiddle on the computer, maybe write a little bit, trying to pull something creative out of the hat. Um, um, a lot of mine has been body pain too. Mm -hmm. So tack on arthritis, um, degenerative hip, you know, um, you know, when you have a lot of pressure on your neck, right. your C3, your C4, right. whatever and all on your neck, you just um, fell in love with little Deb Debbie and all for a long mm -hmm. time. So all the sugar and the uric mm -hmm. acid in the body. And so with, when the body shrinks up and that atrophy kicks in, um, you're not going to find a lot of happiness and all to, right. to draw from and stuff. And so... Um, and like we talked about, it's, it's easy to fall in love with sadness. Mm -hmm. As much as the drug is being happy, there's all, the drug of being depressed, it has its advantages. You, mm -hmm. you can stay in bed. You don't have to go out and actually shine. You don't have to go out and fight for what, what you want in this mm -hmm. life. You can check out, you know. Mm -hmm. So sometimes the, um, the smile is just the mask. Okay. I think it was great um, in watching your film, the illustration of the, di the internal discussion that you were having with the, um, the puppet, I think it was, was that ego. your alter yeah. ego, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah it, just, it just illustrated very well, um, in my opinion, when I was looking at it, that just that internal conversation that you were having. Yeah, it was a very good movie. Insecurities. Oh, yeah. yeah. I the fighting. It, I blame it all on hip-hop. Yeah. Uh, it's hip-hop's <laughs> fault, you know. I, I'd probably have to be married with three kids and the white picket if hip-hop hadn't come into my life, so. Okay. That's what you're going to go with? That's hip -hop. <laughs> First of all, we wanna, we're going to look at an interview with an art therapist. But when we come back, I would like to discuss with you how creativity helps you deal with the depression. Um, because that's a big thing and I, a lot of people need to know that there are ways because we talked about coping skills and I think people under, need to understand that sometimes if you just find a way to cope with certain issues it can help you out of your depression so when we come back is it alright if we talk about that yeah vitamin right. C right creativity alright okay <laughs> so we'll have to take a quick break we'll be right back a lot of stigmas, yes. And um, people struggle with their mental health. They don't know the di difference between mental health and mental illness. We're just gonna talk about some things. It's more acceptable for a male mm -hmm. to fight, right. to be angry, right. to go drink too much, right. to go sleep around too right. much, you know, just that kind of stuff. That kind of behavior is more acceptable than a male to cry, mm -hmm. to say I'm scared. Right. And I believe in prayer. Um, but there are some issues that when you walk outside of that building, they're walking outside with you. You got it. Let me um, take an opportunity to go ahead and explain what a co-occurring disorder mm -hmm. is. Um, basically, like I like the way that you did it because that's what it is. They walk hand in hand. Right. Parents allow the TV to babysit their children. <laughs> Gaslighting is basically there are individuals who are very aware that racism does and right. has always existed. Right. Remember to continue talking about mental health and how to make yours a priority. I am a board certified music therapist. I have been in practice since 2011 and I worked primarily with uh, substance abuse, but I also have had experience working with various populations. And so depression is something that I've seen a lot and had a chance to use music therapy interventions with. And if you go on YouTube, you can find videos where people can put in music therapy for depression um, and come up with some calm, ethereal sounding music in the background. But music therapy, clinical music therapy is a lot more than that. Okay felt something yeah I want more but I don't know where to go I don't know what it looks like because it doesn't look like it's in my area by yeah. using some of the things that you said and yeah. then you throw in the um, the guilt of it being a married woman and it, then all of a sudden everything that you thought you felt might not have even been real if you're looking for more information about a topic that was discussed on one of our shows please visit intake.tv and check out our resource page if you're a professional who would like to be on the show or an individual who has struggled with mental health and would like to be a guest, email us at info at intake.tv. Follow, Follow us on all of our social media platforms. platforms. Okay. <laughs>
intake is the place to be. Is the coach. <laughs> <laughs>